Information shared on the following program is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute legal, tax, investment, or other advice, nor is it intended to recommend any particular investments, products, or financial instruments. Always seek advice from your financial advisor, attorney, or accountant with regard to investment, legal, or tax questions. Hey everybody, been working on my golf game. I'm gonna head up to Louisville. Been uh, playing around here real quick. And then we're gonna talk about money and golf, what that has to do with one another. I got about an hour and 45 minute drive ahead of me. I hope Aaron's got the studio set up. I think we got a wires crossed last week. I have not talked to him, but I'm looking forward to this show. We'll see you soon. Hey Trey, have you seen Tony anywhere? No, I haven't seen him. I thought you guys were already up there filming. Well, I don't know where he is, and we've got a show to film, so meet me upstairs in the studio in five minutes. Put this on. All right, but I'm not wearing this thing. Oh, sweater vest. Welcome to the only show in the country dedicated to helping savers worry less about money. The Worry-Free Retirement with your host, best-selling author and fiduciary, Tony Walker. Okay, guys, listen, I know you're new to this, but it's going to be great. Just make sure you act natural, talk slow, and look into the camera, okay? And we're on. All right, well, here goes nothing. Uh, folks, welcome to this episode of the Worry-Free Retirement. Uh, I am not Tony Walker. This is not Tony Walker. Neither of us are the little man in the sweater vest. I'm Trey Jurgens, fellow fiduciary and retirement planning specialist. This is Wes Walker, Tony's favorite nephew in client communications here at Tony Walker Financial. Uh, we have got to put something together here, Wes. Um, I know you've got some educational clips saved from past episodes, email blasts, webinars. What do you got for us? Yeah, so of all of Tony's educational spots, we have over five days worth of educational content. So. I was able to come up with a few that I think might be good for the show, and if you're ready, we can just get started. Let's go. Let's just talk about the types of annuities you can purchase through an insurance company. The first type is called variable annuity. The second type of annuity is a fixed interest. Number three, one of my favorites, the fixed indexed annuity. And finally, number four, immediate annuities. Let's start with variables because we don't offer variables. The reason we don't offer variables is basically a variable annuity is in the stock market. You've got to understand that. So yes, it can go way up, but it can go way down. The other thing I don't understand why people want these is the darn fees. The average variable annuity charges 4% per year. These are the newer ones. The older ones were a little cheaper, but that's a lot of money, folks. That means you're going to have to earn 4% just to get back to break even. I mean, if we're going to risk our money, why wouldn't we do something like our Charles Schwab platform? We charge a whopping six tenths of 1%. That's a whole lot of savings in fees. Let's look at the second type of annuity, and we do quite a few of these. These are called fixed interest annuities, similar in nature to a bank CD. Generally, you go in and you type your money for maybe five years. Take a bank CD and you want a five-year CD. Obviously, the higher the tie-up period, let's say five years, the higher the return. As of the date of this recording, fixed interest annuities are around 3%, something like that. They fluctuate. All right. Number two, a little more complicated, a newer type of annuity that came out in the late 90s, one of my favorites. We're known around the country for doing a lot of these. In fact, just this past year, we've done over 40 million of fixed indexed annuities just in the year. All right. What I like about these, they're linked to the market. All right. They're participating in the stock market. But look at this. They don't have any risk. So if the market drops, let me show you this real quick. Let's take a look at this. Let me grab a handy pen. It's really pretty simple. Let's say you put $100,000 into a fixed indexed annuity here. And just for the fun of it, let's say the S&P was at 1,000, okay? And then over the course of the year, the S&P tanks. It goes down to 600. Well, because a fixed indexed annuity has no risk, all right, you have a floor. So you do not lose any money even though the market crashed. Now here's what's interesting. It's called reset. So let's imagine that next year, we'll say this was 2019, 2020, and 2021, <clears throat> the S&P goes back up to 800. Now, if you're in the market, you're sweating bullets because even though it's gone back up to 800, you're still way behind, right? You're like 20% down. 
But assuming this was a 40% participation contract, if this went up roughly 20%, so the market still went up 20, right? Theoretically, it went up from here. Then you would make 40% of the 20. They would add 8% and you would have a brand new floor. This is the kind of stuff, by the way, if you want to download our booklet, the Annuity Decision Guide for Savers, I go into great detail. If you've never heard of this concept and you're a saver and you want to try to get some market gains without risk, a great opportunity here. All right, let's go to the last type of annuity. We use these some. These are called immediate annuities. These are like granddad's pension. Basically what happens is once you set this up, it's going to be paid for the rest of your life. You cannot change the income stream or you can set it up for what's called a period certain. Okay, I hope that helps. Those are the four types of annuities. Again, there's a free download at TonyWalkerFinancial.com. All you do on that uh, space bar is type in downloads. I would highly encourage you to download the free booklet, The Annuity Decision Guide for Savers. And Trey, that really is a good summary of annuities. I know that a lot of people think that's all we do, but we do quite a bit more than just annuities, don't we? Yeah, you're exactly right. A lot of people know Tony for annuities. He's one of the top individual producers of annuities in the country, but people don't know that he's been licensed to sell securities since the 80s. And being able to help savers kind of navigate the world of Wall Street, but also insurance products like annuities is really a good way to introduce this next clip, the split IRA concept. So pull that one up. I think that's a really good concept to show people. Do you like pies? I love pies. My mom does a really good strawberry pie and a chocolate pie. And I once was kidding around saying, hey, mom, instead of just making a chocolate pie and a strawberry pie, why don't you just kind of mix all that up together? Maybe part of it be chocolate, part of it strawberry. And she's like, well, that's not going to work. Well, that's kind of the way with money, folks. There is a one size fits all mentality out there that when you're in a 401k that people think you got to be in the stock market, that you need all chocolate pie, that you can't divide it up. And this is totally ludicrous. So what I'm going to do is share with you what would happen if we divided up the pie differently. Remember, we just got through talking about our split IRA concept so we can diversify things so you can have your pie and eat it too, so to speak, versus what I just ran into the other day with a gentleman that had 100% of his money, still does, in his 401k in the stock market. So we're going to imagine 300000 is with the investor and 300000 is with our split IRA concept. So this person has 100% of their money in the stock market. And we're going to imagine, just for the heck of it, we're just postulating here. Remember back in 08, the market went down, depending on where you had it, anywhere from 37 to 50%. So let's just say we're in a downward spiral here. And over the last year, the stock market has gone down, let's say 30%, depending on where they had it. So 300,000 at 30%, that means this person's account on paper, remember it's not real, this is not real money, it's funny money. Real money doesn't become real money until it's converted to cash in use. So on paper, a year ago, this person had 300,000 and now after a $90,000 loss, they have $210,000 and they asked me, Tony, what should I do? Well, as a fiduciary, it's hard for me to say, well, why don't you get out now? I mean, that's a $90,000 loss. And this literally did happen the other day. I said, I think you're going to have to stay and hope this thing comes back. That's too much of a loss to move. But irregardless, they thought they had 300. Now they only have 210. That's the facts as we have them. But what would happen, let's walk over here. If instead we had put this $300,000 in the split IRA, okay? And in this example, we had chocolate pie and strawberry pie. What I did in this example, I divided it up originally we only put 30% in the stock market and 70% in what we refer to as a fixed indexed annuity. No risk whatsoever. So again, 70% in the annuity, and that's not going to grow a lot. They're not meant to grow 40 and 50%. That's not what we're trying to do here. Remember, we're flipping the switch from investing to protecting. But we did leave 30% here in our Charles Schwab platform. Now, here's what's interesting. They chose what's called our moderate growth, which has about 60% in the stock market. So, but it's only 60% of the 30 because 70% is not in the stock market. So let's do the math real quick. So that means they had $100,000 in the Charles Schwab platform. You with me? 60% of that 100 or $60,000 was actually exposed to the stock market. The stock market went down 30%, so we take 30% off that. 
So their losses with our split IRA, 18,000 versus 90,000. Now, I don't know about you, that's not sleep insurance, folks. That's some sleepless nights. This is what we call sleep insurance. The idea is when you go to bed at night, instead of waking up and seeing the market go down 2,000 points or whatever it went back on March 9th, you look at it and you go, okay, yeah, I did lose some money, but the brunt of my money is totally protected. If this looks like something you're sitting there saying, why doesn't anybody share this kind of stuff with me? How come I'm out here playing a 100% game in the market here and something that I truly don't understand that has all this risk, then why don't we consider this called the split IRA concept? Let's put that up full screen again. Let me show you again how this works. The split IRA concept, what happens is you and I would sit down in person. When we sit down, I'm trying to understand, number one, how much risk you're willing to take, how close you are to retirement, or if you're already retired, what your current income needs are, how much you want to leave when you die. All of these things go into planning your retirement. And somebody has to be well-trained in this. Folks, I've done this for 35 years. I know this world really, really well. And what I always start off with the premise is, why do we need to take all this risk if we don't have to? The reason you think you've got to take all this risk is you do not have a written game plan. That is something we provide all of our prospective clients at no charge. So if you'd like to meet, get a second opinion, get a written game plan of your situation, and see how we divide up the pie to give you some better sleep at night, just log on right now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Once there, you're going to click on that Let's Get Started button. That information is confidentially sent to our office. You will be contacted. You and I will either talk by phone or meet in person. Again, that's Tony walkerfinancial.com. That's really good stuff, Trey. I think that was one of the first aha moments I had in this business, just realizing that we had that Schwab platform in addition to all the annuities we write, those annuities providing the guaranteed mailbox money and that Schwab platform providing the liquidity for our Saber clients. Yeah, it's funny you say aha moment. That's really the aha moment a lot of clients come to find is when we lay out in our proprietary income software, how you have that use and flexibility, but also the guarantee on the back end. Uh, however, you can really only plan so much, and one thing's for certain, life's going to change, there's going to be surprises, so let's go to those three biggest surprises in retirement. This is our income software, but look at this, in the second half of life, in this example, we have two different ages of this couple, and at his age 65, he stops working, or she stops working, it doesn't matter, but notice now, all of the money we've set up begins to be deployed, it begins to be implemented. And what we're interested in is how much income are we going to have to live on? You see, folks, cash flow is king when it comes to retirement planning. The retirement planning specialist you work with has to understand the ramifications of when to take the money out, how much taxes are going to be owed, and how to keep from running out of it. This is proprietary software. I had this created because there was nothing like it. We're not doing calculations. We don't need a calculator. We need something that puts you, our staff, and your family on the same page so that we know what to do when things change because change will come. You know, speaking of change, there are basically three big, huge surprises that I've figured out in working with so many savers in the second half of life. Let's take a look at three of the biggest surprises we see. Number one, this is a good one, that you're going to start spending less and less as you get older. Now you may be saying, well, that's not what I've heard from the financial world, Tony. They keep telling me I got to save more and more. And I'm sitting there saying, wait a minute, at some point, you're going to get to an age in life where you're not even going to probably buy green bananas anymore. You're not even saving, you're not even spending so much. So listen to me, except for some sort of healthcare crisis, I get it, but you're going to spend less and less. Are you listening to me out there? You 55 year olds, you're not going to need a gajillion dollars in retirement you will spend less and less. Here's the second surprise that I see over and over with second halfers. This is a good one. Health will worsen more quickly than you think. Now, I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news, but I have a lot of clients, a lot of clients in the second half of life, and you can bet your bottom dollar as they age, what happens is they come into me and one of the spouses is starting to have health issues. In many cases, it happens very quickly. So all I'm trying to do is remind you from a perspective standpoint that as you get older, you'll spend less. Plus, you may not be able to spend any more anyway because of health. Let's take a look at this. Think about this. If you go to Disney World, we go to Disney World a lot, and look around, how many 75-year-olds do you see there? Well, if you see them, they're not running around. They're probably on some park bench wishing they were back home. 
Uh, I was invited out to Iowa to meet with a large company. We needed to talk about some things. They treated me to dinner at a really nice steakhouse. I started looking around. I mean, these are $50 steaks we were eating. And I th thought about this. I said, there's nobody in here over 65. That's because most people in the six, uh, second half of life are not going to waste a bunch of money on a $50 steak. Now, let's go to surprise number three. You're getting the drift of this. You may be busier than you think. You know, you may be busier with different things. More and more people that I meet in the second half of life are enjoying being with their grandkids. They're doing busy things, unfortunately, like having to go to the doctor, keep up with things. So you will get busier. It's just a different kind of busier. So here's the point, folks. We want to set the stage for the second half of life. We want to plan for today, but also live for tomorrow and try to enjoy the fruits of our labor while we can. If you're sitting there and you're saying, Tony, I don't really have anybody that's helping me spend and enjoy my money. All they want to talk about is save, 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 and then they don't want to give me any of my money back. Well, that's not the right approach, and that's not how the real world plays out at all. But I've been doing this for over 35 years, folks. I've met in person with over 15,000 people. I've personally overseen over 4,000 game plans. I know this world very well. So if you're looking for somebody you can trust, log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. And no cost or obligation, I'll be happy to review your situation, regardless of your age, whether you're retired or nearing retirement. Log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, and let's get started. Well, things definitely have a way of changing, and that's all the more reason to have a written game plan, a fiduciary, and a retirement planning specialist in your corner in retirement. Guys, I just want to remind everybody how in retirement, health can deteriorate so quickly. After all, Tony always says, it's not if you die, but when you die. Now, Trey, I remember there was a clip of you and him discussing life insurance. So why don't we go to that clip right now where people can learn how to pay off their life insurance in just 10 years. With us in the studio is my favorite son-in-law, our life insurance specialist here at Tony Walker Financial, Trey Jurgens. Trey, how are you doing this morning? I'm good, how are you? Thanks I'm, for having me. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, now we've had more and more questions and uh, some really favorable comments about this whole notion of what we call 10 pay life insurance. Let me point to this. You know, these are the five things, folks, that we talk about that first halfers should consider. So we're talking about number two. That's all we're talking about with Trey. And, uh, you know, we, I, we were talking before we came on, Trey. Everybody wants to pay off their house early, and I'm all for that. And we often talk about why does people not want to pay off their life insurance early? You're going to eventually die. Why wouldn't you want to get all your money back tax-free and leave it to kids. So you've got a great concept to share. It's called the 10 pay life insurance policy. Yeah, so on a recent webinar, we covered three types of life insurance. The last one being whole life. We highlighted a 10 pay whole life insurance policy, which in essence, you pay for only 10 years. So you kind of combine the payments into those uh, 10 years. Kind of like paying off your home. Exactly, right? so yeah. 15 year mortgage versus 30, you're kind of paying up front and not taking those premium payments into retirement. So we took a 35-year-old, just in this example, one of our companies, preferred female, meaning they're in good health, mm -hmm. uh, no nicotine use. All this factors in, and Trey can get you an illustration if you want to look at your situation. But let's go over these numbers. Pretty fascinating, Trey. Yeah, so in a 10 pay for a 35-year-old female, again, this is no tobacco use, what she's considered doing is paying $500 a month, so $6,000 annual premium. And reminder, it's just for 10 years. So after 10 years, she's invested $60,000 into this policy. But no more premiums are due yep. now, the rest she's, of her life. She's done, she's paid Guaranteed, up. guaranteed, folks, let me use that word, it's done. All right, go ahead. Exactly, so after that 10 years, the cash value, the net cash value, assuming current dividends, is almost what she's put into it, which wow. is $58,989. So really no risk or anything like that, no right. taxes have had to been paid, no, not a bunch of fees, go right. ahead. So that first year, immediately, the death benefit is $195,000. So that's only at $500 a month. After the 10 years, she's done paying. That's grown to $222,506. So contrary to what people like to say about life insurance not growing, if you have the right type of overfunded policies, it'll keep growing as well as the dividends are paid, correct? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So let's fast forward now to 65. What happens knowing again that this person has not paid any more premiums, current dividends. Oh, by the way, one of the companies we use, I thought this was so cool. They have paid a dividend on their life insurance contracts consecutively for 115 years. And I thought, I keep forgetting these products have been around forever. They have truly stood the test yeah. of time, haven't they? Pretty healthy institutions. Yeah, they are. Go ahead at 65. Yeah, so fast forward to 65. She hasn't paid a premium in 20 years at that point. 
and the policy's grown to $141,000 of cash value, and that's something she can borrow, get her hands on, and death benefit at that point is $288,000, almost $289,000. Well, good call on that clip, Aaron. It really does a good job of showing how we use life insurance in the process of retirement planning. And it's also just one of the many things we do over here at Tony Walker Financial. Yeah, you're exactly right. One of the big things, and I know Tony just had you uh, study up on this and receive an accreditation for Social Security planning. And then Lisa Allercamp in our office is also certified to plan around Social Security. It's one of the biggest assets savers go into retirement with. So it's something they definitely want to get right. And let's go to that example where we showed Jeff and Dina and Tony talks about how they get Social Security right. Let's do a hypothetical example of Jeff and Dina. Let's take a look at their situation. First of all, we have Jeff. He's basically 65 years of age, and he's thinking about taking his full retirement, Social Security, when he turns 66, which would be $2,359 a month. All right? He's expected to live about till age 84. That's what his life expectancy means. Let's take a look at his wife, Dina. Now, in her case, she's 59. And her full retirement age benefit, which would be 67 for her, would be $1,558 a month. So after some planning and some thinking, here's what they've decided to do. We're going to take Jeff, and what Jeff has decided to do, because if he waits on his Social Security, which would provide a higher survivor benefit, he decides to wait to file until 2024 when he turns 70. That means Jeff would have $3,165 a month of mailbox money for the rest of his life. Dina, she's going to file in the year 2027 when she turns 67. She'll have $1,558 a month for the rest of her life. Now, all's well and good if both Jeff and Dina live a long, happy life. In fact, that's well over $4,600 a month, and much of it is not even taxable. But wait a minute. What happens if Jeff, three years after he collects his Social Security, dies at age 73. What happens to Dina's Social Security? Does she keep getting it? No. In fact, her Social Security overnight disappears. So all of a sudden, she's enjoying all this money, but it drops dramatically at $1,500 a month. Well, where's she going to get it? Well, in comes the mailbox money that we've already arranged. So this $373,000 that Dina would lose in all of her Social Security benefits is replaced buy an annuity. And you say, well, Tony, how in the world did the annuity come about? Well, fortunately for Jeff and Dina, they worked with a retirement planning specialist well in advance like us. And in our example at Tony Walker Financial, we had placed them in our proprietary worry-free split IRA concept. So what did we do? Well, back when Jeff retired, what he did, he put his 401k and rolled it over to us. And in this example, we put some of the money in our low fee platform through Charles Schwab, which gave Jeff and Dina maximum flexibility to use before the Social Security started, even before we needed lifetime income. And what did we do with a portion of that money? We put that in a fixed annuity with an income rider. Why did we do that? Because we knew that if Jeff died first and he stepped out of the picture, we would step in. In fact, what we did in this example, the $263,000 in this example that we split up and put in the annuity, at Jeff's death would pay exactly the $1,558 a month Dina needed to live on. Yeah, that's really good stuff, Wes. When you think about Social Security... Hey, Aaron, you in here? What in the world? Uh, Wes, go to the clip. So as you can see, prior to 1978, there were really three main parties involved in saving for Americans' retirement. There was the employer who provided something called a defined benefit plan or pension plan, now, these defined benefit plans, which were numerous in 1978, are quite rare today. Basically, they are a guaranteed stream of income that guarantees the employee, based on his or her number of years of service, in terms of how much they've worked for this employer, will get a set amount of money called mailbox money. Now, this was the gig with my granddad and his employer at Bell South. Old Wild Bill jumped up on the telephone poles in 1932 and worked with them for 43 years years until finally he retired, ironically, in 1978 with a pension. You can see here, it wasn't much, but at least granddad knew what he would receive and that this amount of money would last for the rest of his life guaranteed. Now, this guaranteed stream of income took the worry off the table for granddad. All he and Hazel had to do was not spend more than the pension income was bringing in. 
and they would be fine, which they did, by the way. But still, even with pensions, the government was a key player in the equation because just like today, they not only oversaw the laws governing pensions, but they also subsidized, as we mentioned earlier, with something called the pension guarantee system. So really, this was really a pretty simple system for everyone. But as 1978 was coming to a close, employers were nervous that these people out there that they had to insure through the pensions were living longer than expected, that they might have trouble paying all these workers this income for life. A true uncertainty indeed. So, in a hurry, now this is just my theory, the employers and the big businesses out there and the politicians and then the folks on Wall Street got together to create a new form of saving system called the 401k. So the employers left and Wall Street came onto the scene, shifting the burden, not onto the employers, but all of a sudden squarely on the shoulders of these hardworking Americans. And thus we have the dawn of the 401k plan, which as you can see has allowed Wall Street to infiltrate Main Street now moving trillions of dollars from guaranteed assets such as annuities within these plans to something that Wall Street charges fees on and also that the poor old Joe Lunchbox out there has at risk. That's not just Wall Street, but banks, insurance companies, big institutions all benefit from this money stockpiled in these 401k plans. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the 401k plan. It is a great savings tool. I've always said that, folks, but as a retirement planning specialist with over 35 years in this business, as evidenced by the recent changes with the SECURE Act, we realize it is a lousy tool for spending and enjoying your money. Well, folks, sorry about the brief interruption with uh, uh, Wes and uh, Trey. Hope you did enjoy the clips, though, and it looks like we don't have any more time for me to talk about golf and money. But guess what? Next week, we're going to start a brand new series here at the Worry Free Retirement. It's called Everything Under One Roof. What if you had an advisor, a retirement planning specialist that could take all of your assets, all of your estate planning, all of your goals for you and your family for the future, both through retirement and after you're gone? What if one fiduciary, a full service firm could handle all of that? Well, guess what? At Tony Walker Financial, we can. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to share with you why it is so important for you to put everything under one roof. To learn more about Tony Walker Financial or to contact us right away, why don't you log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Maybe you're sitting there thinking, you know, I've got a 401k that needs to be rolled over. Um, I've just received an inheritance. Or watching these video clips, Tony, I realize I don't have a fiduciary and I certainly don't have a written game plan that concisely can tell me exactly what I've got, how I can spend it, and how I can keep from running out of money. We'd be happy to talk to you again. Just log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, click on that Let's Get Started, and remember, there's never a cost or obligation to meet. Well, I'll tell you what, next week, we're already prepared for next week's show on everything under one roof. Looks like since I don't have a show to do, I'm gonna go out and finish up a round of golf. You take care, and we'll see you soon. <music>